<coughs> Patch 13.11 is out, so let's do the rundown of all the all the changes. There's quite a lot of stuff. Romu, Yomu got nerfed, uh, Duskblade got buffed, Rel got many changes, there's uh, buff sharing, there are basically two buffs per team. Alright, let's dive in. So, let's start with Rel. So Rel got a huge adjustment on all of her abilities. Uh, and yeah, so let's start. Uh, base stats. Her attack speed is in increased. Attack speed growth is decreased. Armor growth is decreased. Magic resist growth is decreased. Movement speed is decreased. Uh, and so yeah, that's the base stats passive. Passive duration is now 5 seconds. Armor and magic resist shred. Is from 10 from 10 percent goes to 2.5 and now it stacks up to five times per target and it also applies on the abilities so i'm pretty sure i'm not sure i think it was 10 percent on basic attacks only and then she gets this armor and magic resist for herself which she shreds from enemies so now she can shred more over time so that's how it is uh, minimum still goes from 5 to 12 to 1. 25 to 2.5 per stack so it's pretty much the same so that doesn't really change uh, the total is the same but you need to stack it up death proof magnets keep resist for the full duration even if the target dies that's nice no longer this magic damage hitting a new target refers to the passive duration on all, on all targets or oh, hitting a new target ah no longer refreshes okay make that makes sense that makes sense no longer refreshes the passive and passive no longer applies to minions. All right, that's 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 decent. All right. Stunning strike. So here's the biggest change, probably. Her Q now stuns. It doesn't heal, but it stuns. I think that's that's just better for like the kind of engage pa engage support she is, right? So this is a huge buff. Uh, and she also dashes a little bit, I think. But all right. Uh, 685 units to 150 behind to 520 in front 220 behind all right so it's shorter the q the trust is shorter all right and cooldown is increased quite a lot since it's a stun now makes sense so it goes to nine from 11 to nine all right magic damage is decreased quite a lot which still makes sense since it's a stun cast time is longer just some extra damage to jungle camps, so maybe rel jungle, who knows. When rel casts Q, she moves 100 units forward as she takes a step to swing. So the range went from six, 685 to 520, but she moves 100 units, so it's like 620. So the range is decreased just a little bit, I guess. We'll see. All right. And QDT reduce damage to the other enemies after the first one. Only applied passive. Now it does full damage and applies passive to all enemies hit. Alright. Alright, cool. So Q is a stun now. That's massive. Alright. Dismounted bonus attack speed. So now she gains attack speed when she's dismounted. And she gains attack range when she's dismounted. Gets more armor and magic resist a little bit. Dismounted movement speed. Reduced by 15%. Early game. Nerf early game and buff late game. Functionally, alright. No longer has movement speed cap while dismounted. Alright, so she can get something to boost her move speed. Gas walker or something and still walk faster. Magic damage is reduced. Alright. And shield is reduced also by 5, okay. Maximum slide distance is lowered. So I think it's the cast range, right? I guess. Or like the AoE on the ground, maybe? No, AoE is lowered. No, range is also lowered. So whatever this is, it's lowered. And the range is lowered, alright. No cap is shorter, makes sense, she, since now she's got the stun, so too much CC. 
100% of jump speed is light speed. I don't know how that works 100% alright, so I don't know what this slide is, but anyway, it's faster. And it's more damage to jungle camps. We'll see. Maybe jungle rail, maybe. I mean, the ganks would be pretty good from jungle rail, so... Alright. Mounted bonus move speed, rail no longer gains bonus passive movement speed while mounted. So... No longer gains move speed, but she gets it here back. Initial move speed bonus, so when she mounts up, she gets like a really small, I mean, 45%, no, it's, it's, no, it's static, 30% that rap rapidly decays over one second, so really short movement speed buff makes sense. And the E, uh, passive, rail gains bonus move speed while mounted, based on level, reduced by 50% in combat, so she, her base move speed went from 335 to 330. But then when she's mounted, she still keeps late game, level 13. Since it's only, it's only based on level. So at level 13, she still gains 25. So she's sitting at, what, 355 move speed base while mounted. So that's quite a lot, actually, that's quite a lot. Full tilt, rather than ally charge, gaining ramping move speed over 3 seconds, doubled to, towards enemies or each other. Additionally, rail attack or shattering strike explodes in an area for... Oh, maximum health damage. Alright, so she gained some more damage here and maximum health damage. So her losing some damage on the W and the Q is offset by this pretty much. I mean, still less base damage because she lost 50 and here she lost 20. So 70 total, but she gains some. She gains 75 back and then 4% max health late game, right? So 5 less damage on a combo, like a one rotation, let's say. And 4% max health damage. What else? And it's only for the rel, not for the ally. Alright. Huge change changes. Um, yeah, it's a it's a great it's a great it's a huge change for Rel for sure. We'll see how it plays out, but definitely, definitely this is good. I would say for Rel players. Yeah, let's let's see. All right, Akali, Q base damage decreased. They say decreased, but it's actually increased because I don't know. So, it goes from thirty to forty. 140 so it's 10 more uh, so it is increased so Q, Q damage increased on Akali small buff that's nice for Akali I guess she's not like the, the strongest champion right now maybe so that's decent uh, Amumu W damage decreased per tick goes from 10 to 7 I'm not sure what Amumu max is first so Amumu's W it's just flat damage. It's got no scaling. So at all so at all ranks, he's just gonna deal three the less damage per tick. I think that's fine. It's not a huge I mean it's meaningful early game. After that doesn't really matter since it's all about the percentage damage rate. So a, a, a small nerf in the early game hits the support Amomo also, which I think is good because he's very strong. Jaguar Amomo is also really strong right now, so Decent change, all right. Aphelios, bonus, passive bonus AD decreased. Um, so bonus damage, bonus attack damage. So one of the three stats he can get, attack speed, lethality, or attack damage, he gets less attack damage per stack to 4.5 from five. Makes sense, all right. So yeah, that is it. Small, small nerf to Aphelios. There it is. It's decent. It's decent, I guess. All right. Not a, not a huge change though. 3 AD, like mid game or something. Doesn't really change too much. All right. Aurelion Soul. E mana cost increased. Magic damage AP ratio decreased. So there's some, there's some nerf to Aurelion. That's nice. So mana cost. 
is higher early game for the E and damage per tick goes to 5% AP from 6.25 I mean I don't think that's the reason why Aurelion is even strong it's more about like his Q right but he is really strong right now so that's a decent change some some form of nerf all right sure sure I think that's good all right Azir, Q cooldown decreased, W summon range increased, W summon range increased, AP ratio increased, damn, that's massive for Azir, 25, alright, so cooldown goes down, by 2 seconds early game, you still max Q probably, so if you max Q then it's still a buff early game, <laughs> that's really oppressive in lane, alright, even more oppressive now, summon range 25 more units, that is very significant actually for azir magic damage scales with 60 percent ap so his dps goes up his cooldown goes you know early game is bust is uh, boosted is buffed his early game is buffed here the, his dps goes up a little bit like he's scaling he's anyway a scaling champion and the summon range which is the most significant in here i would say because he can play much safer, right? Great changes for Azir. Like, I like this, honestly. It's great. This is huge. Summon range is absolutely huge. This is nice. And this is also nice. Gonna be even more oppressive early in game now. In lane. Alright. That's the Azir. Alright. Ivern. Daisy. So this is not the buff where he gets like a Daisy knockup or something. They just adjusting stuff with him. All right. So what is here? Ivern. Q follow up adjusted. Cast range increased. Now the horns cooldown when used on non epic monsters. W adjust gives a less bonus on hit damage. Vision no spawn from spawn duration increases. Burst. This spawn conditions changed. Each now refers to no enemies were hit by the detonation. What? Daisy stats adjusted. Slam damage increased. Alright, so huge changes to Ivern. Alright. Root color. Ivern can now recast Q to jump directly to the target. While Ivern and Alex can issue an attack command to move. Yeah, so you had to like auto click, but now he can dash. Wait, jump directly to the target. That means he dashes on top of it? Maybe. I hope he doesn't because this is gonna be kinda crazy. But alright. And it gets more range even. Alright, alright. Q's cooldown is now reduced by 50% when used on non epic monsters. Non epic monsters. So all the jungle camps 50%. So okay, so you can jump bef before between walls for mobility better with this. Alright. I wonder if he jump if he dashes directly, because this is a huge change, makes him more oppressive, if it, if it is so. Alright. So this is good for Ivern. Buff, buff already. Alright. Uh, w, Brush Maker. Passive bonus magic damage on hit when exiting the brush for 3 seconds now applies to ally champions. Ally champions? In what? How, how does it apply? When they leave his brush, I guess. Not all the brushes. Wait. Ally on hit damage. 10% Ivern's AP. Alright. 5 to 15. Alright. He gets 8 seconds of vision inside the brush now. up to a maximum of 45 seconds so if your team loses vision when your team loses vision they disappear forty five seconds or until your team loses vision alright so I don't know it needs to be tested don't exactly understand this 
but it can be longer in any case if you do have the vision in it and now the vision is eight seconds so that's really long all right and auto attack the empowered brush make another special visual effect reflect on him damage all right visual change fine so i guess it's a buff also he can he gives allies on hit damage all right it triggers it if if when the shield designs are not enemies are hit by the donation the shield has not been broken the duration of the shield is renewed the duration but i guess like the shield refreshes right so sh so if the shield is not broken it's pretty big so maybe he can put a shield on one guy and then the shield will refresh and by the time like it expires a second time he can shield someone again right <laughs> He can shield preemptively, like entering a teamfight and stuff. That's really good for Ivern. It's really good. Damn, alright. But if you break it, then it's the same as it was. Alright. And the Daisy. Daisy attack range is higher, alright. HP regeneration gets HP regen now. Movement speed, more move speed. More range, more move speed. More attack speed. Bonus attack speed is less with scaling with level, alright. So, you know, so it's not too overtuned late game, I guess. It's still a buff, alright. All across the board. Daisy slam damage. Uh, Daisy's AD. Okay, so slam damage is increased by 4d60 AD. Alright, so more damage base, so it doesn't need to build any anything for it to work. Alright. So there it is, the Ivern buffs. Definitely people gonna be trying him out. I wonder if this dashes him on top. I don't exactly understand this. Your team, so if they lose vision, they, it instantly disappears, I don't know. This is really nice change. Shield preemptively. And all this buff gets some base damage. Really nice for Ivern. More oppressive early game. More range on Q, what the hell, alright. Huge changes. So Ivern definitely will be tried by people now. Alright, Jinx. Attack speed growth decreased. Yeah, Jinx is pretty strong, so she gains a small nerf for the attack speed. Which is reversed. We're reverting the attack speed growth to interest in part 13.5. So it's just taking back some buff, alright. So there it is, small nerf, that's fine. For Jinx, I think that's good, not the end of the world. It's still a scaling, scaling buff, so like it doesn't really affect laning that that much. All right, maybe mid game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 36 is quite a lot, but still, you know, it's probably fine. All right. So what, she loses at, at level 18, she loses six percent right i think it's percentages six percent come on that's that's not a huge deal all right it's really small the smaller kalista base hp increased all right so it's a buff health regeneration increased also attack damage decreased passive vision interaction adjusted only damage increased q damage increased equal down decreased damage adjusted all right so more hp Health regeneration more, all right. Health regeneration growth also more. Attack damage less, five less AD. Attack damage growth also less, all right. So, f so she loses five and then 0.5 per level, but she's more tanky. I think that's decent for Kalista, right? Because you know she stacks with E, right? So she, if she gets more time to use the East, then it's good for her, all right. You can run, but you can't hide. Kaisa's basically no longer miss if a target leaves, leaves vision. All right, that's good. That's good. Why was it even like this? I don't know. Damage dealt on hit. Like, it's inconsistent with other attacks, right? I get it. This is unique, but... Uh, okay, I think this is good. So now it works normally. Damage dealt on hit. 90% total AD to 100% of total AD. What? 
so now she deals full damage. So they reduce her attack damage by 5, which is not even 10%. And now she gains, and now she does full damage. What? That is a huge change for Kaista. That's really good. Because she gets even better scaling now, right? More damage, she can beat more life still, use it better. All right. So it's a really nice buff to Kaista. Kaista is pretty strong. I don't know. I don't know. So they give her more HP, then they take away some AD. But then they give her more damage on her basic attacks by over 10%, right? What the hell? Alright. Q Pierce. More AD scaling. Alright, so, so this is to offset this a little bit. Not a huge change. I guess it's gonna deal a bit less damage early game. Alright. So a small nerf to this Q damage. Rents, 8 seconds at all ranks. I mean, you max it first, but still. At the beginning, 8 seconds? Damage per extra stack. 10 to 34, 8 to 24, alright. Per stack, so per extra stack. The damage goes by, down by 10. By 2 early game, by 10 late game. 40.6% AD. Now it's 45% AD. So it scales better with AD. So everything scales better with LD, AD. Her basic attacks scale better, her Q scales better, and her E scales better. So life still is better on Kalista right now, I would say. And that's pretty much the biggest change, right? Because she's kind of like, just wants like kite and extend the fights with the survivability. So this is kind of weird to me. Kalista is pretty strong right now. But this is just buffs, right? Maybe small nerfs on like base stats, but it much better scaling. Feeling weak. So may maybe she's not that good. I don't know. I, f I felt like she's pretty strong. All right. So that's so that's nice for Kalista. Bunch of buffs. All right. Rek'Sai, the champion that lost its its identity, its item, the Prowler. All right. Was one of the non assassin. Let's see what they changed for Rek'Sai. Tremor sense refresh rate is 1 second instead of 1.5. So this circle when they're moving, I guess. That's cool. I, I wonder how it how it is right now. Much better tracking. I don't know why I changed this. This is a bit of like a skill thing to track people with this. So now it's easier, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Alright, heal with maximum fury. 20 to 190 plus 20 for every three levels plus maximum HP I don't feel like counting this why didn't they count it they should have outlined this like per level right why is it like this right yes so is it more healing I don't even know if it's more Passive refresh rate increase, increase, increase. All right, so it's a buff. In any case, more healing. So top lane Rek'Sai gets a buff even more, right? And more sustaining jungle. So that's good for Rek'Sai. All right, cool down. Four seconds at all, all levels. Two seconds. What? Unburrowed. Unburrowed. So two seconds cooldown on Q. She can generate the fury stacks of it though, right? And it's two second cooldown. That's so much more DPS. Duration is three seconds, but that is super good. Mid game clears everything; just gets so much better. Two seconds, and the DPS of this champion, which is like kind of crazy early game anyway, is su super buffed. She's got the Sperma right now, on rank five, right? Perma Q. Between she does three basic attacks, it's probably two seconds. So she's got a Perma. Q with like an auto reset. That's so crazy. All right, the DPS. Basic attacks now refer to the buff duration of Queen's Rat. So duration is three seconds, but now she can extend it with basic attacks. Oh, but she can extend it, which means if she attacks, 
one makes an attack, waits two seconds, then makes an attack, then waits two seconds, then makes an attack. She cannot recast it, I guess. I'm not sure, maybe she can still. So we don't know. We don't really know. If she can if she can recast it after two seconds, it's a massive buff to DPS. If she can't recast it, then it's not really a huge change. When the first queue ends, you just have a second one ready always. Alright. Unburrowed Q. Burrow I mean bur burrowed Q. Reveal is longer, it's now five seconds. Alright. Oh that sucks because it reveals stuff, it, re it reveals everything. Alright, anyway, I'm biased on this one, but I think it's... Is it necessary to make this 5 seconds? I don't know. Alright, there it is. Target range increase too much, untargeted range. Yeah, because you could like click on the target and it wouldn't hit. But you could just manually press W, something like that. Edge of your knockup and press W in time instead of clicking at the moment. It was better to line Rex up, uh, up. So now you can just click on their target and hit it. All right, that's how it works now. So it's a quality of life. All right. Renekton, equal down, decreased, air cooldown, decreased, magic damage increased. So cooldown on E goes down. All right, that's, that's massive. He doesn't max this, probably. I don't think he does. So this is really good for Renekton. Harder to catch him and stuff. And ult. He gains... A huge cooldown reduction on later levels, alright. 80 seconds. 40 seconds shaved off the ult, he's got ult all the time now. Magic damage per tick. 30, 60, 90, holy. 0.5 seconds ticks. That's a lot of damage. So Renekton got really good scaling now. Well, I don't know, I don't know. I have not seen many Renektons lately, but that's really good buffs for Renekton, all right. And Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate, huge change. W. Change. From eight seconds to six seconds, and now it's six seconds at all ranks. Twisted Fate maxes Q first, usually for the wave clear. So this is, this is massive, this is absolutely massive in all of those assassin matchups more stuns and stuff. Huge change for Twisted Fate. Let's see. I don't know, but this is this is big. This is big. Even for like attack speed Twisted Fate, which I think is not exactly valuable right now, it's still a huge change, right? Since he wants to max E, I guess, and then he's got more stuns, so... Gives you more flexibility with the build, right? Kind of. Alright, but it's a it's a big change. It's a it's a huge change. He gets more mana, right? He can ref, you know throw random cards. You can't punish him. Early game huge boost for Twisted Fate. So if you're a Twisted Fate player, super excited about this because this is like a massive massive change. And that is it for the champion. Champion changes. Uh, items now. Let's take a look at the items because there are some changes quite a lot. Alright, so Ardent Sensor. Attack speed is reduced, or it is static 20%. So it's a nerf for late game. Highest win rate, second purchase. Yeah, the, the item is pretty strong right now. Alright, decent. It's a nerf. Yeah, if you're crashing the lane so hard that you get it like first five levels, then it's a buff, probably. It's probably just a nerf. Uh, yeah, small nerf. I mean, 10% attack speed. Sizable. Alright. It's it's decent. All right. Dusk Blade of Dark Tar. Dark Tar? Dark Tar. Huge. Huge buff. All right. Dusk Blade has been overshadowed. Kind of true. But Dusk Blade is kind of like the defensive option, right? Well, not anymore. Dusk Blade is the defensive option, but actually it's the offensive option because it's the highest damage dealing of the mythics now. It seems all right. So let's take a look. Night Stalker bonus ability damage from zero to fifteen goes from zero to twenty percent. So huge, huge increase already. And then maximum bonus damage health threshold 
20% to 30%. So you get the damage faster and it's more damage. And it's quite a lot. So I'm pretty sure Deskblade is the most, the hardest hitting uh, item right now for assassins. I will do the testing for this. Uh, yeah, after this rundown, all right. But that is how it is. It's probably the new highest damage item. I don't know if it's justified since Yomu gives you a lot of utility with move speed still. So I don't know if this is the default item, but it is the highest damage item going forwards. All right. Ecos of Hylia is too strong at healing, no way around it. It is, yeah, that's, I agree. This is really strong. So healing per shard goes down. All right. And 20 to 80, level 6 to 18, all right. So it's like offset, but kind of at the later level, starting at level 6. Passive damage per shard. So damage goes down and healing goes down. Decent nerf, this item is really strong right now for supports. So not anymore, I guess, or a, a bit weaker. All right. Gale Force. Gale Force got a nerf for the active, pretty much. So 150-350, but it gets 250% critical strike chance to 200% uh, for like the execution, right? No, I guess it just, the damage just scaled with crit chance. All right, so that's how it was. And the execution also goes down uh, by 10%. So just a nerf on the active damage. That's fine. Not that big of a deal, I would say. But it is nerfed, all right. Kraken Slayer, a huge change. Now it is physical damage. So all of the AD carries and like Kog'Maths and all this getting like a lot of hybrid damage now. So they kind of put an end to it. So now it's it actually does more damage. So 20 damage, 60 AD, 45 AP goes to 35 so it's already more to 85 so it's quite a lot more base damage and scales with five percent more id and scales with more ap even so there it is huge change more id i mean more more damage but it is all physical so i don't know it doesn't kind of make sense since this is supposed to be like a tank slayer item right so if it's physical, then I don't know, but it is it is changed now. I would rather see like a Runan being changed to physical or something. I don't know. I have no idea, but all right. There it is, the Kraken Slayer. Physical damage, more damage. Let's see how it, how it is. Uh, so Moonst Moonstone Renewer. Weaker compared to other support mythic items. Chain heal, 20 to 35, 20 to 40. So more healing and single heal is also higher. All right, so more healing on this item. That's fine. All right, nice. All right. Now for the quick blades. Quick blades has fallen pretty far, pretty far behind. That's true, it's not very popular, I would say. So the recipe changes, now it builds out of a BF sort, like just like infinity, all right. And gives more ID, less ability haste. Cooldown reduction goes up on hit. And a mythic passive gives more ID. Interesting. That's actually a massive buff, like overall, because you get less ability haste, you get less ability haste twice, but then this goes up, right? So the value of the item is more, right? Because it reduces more cooldowns from the from this transcendence on hit, rather than just giving you flat reduction. Some champions like it, some champions don't like it, but overall it's like a more damage change, so. Yeah, solid, much more damage. Let's see. There it is, different build buff. I think this is overall a buff to Navori, definitely for like efficiency. 
some champions might prefer the cooldown reduction here, but <laughs> kind of interesting. Riot is not insisting on calling transcendence ability haste, right? They are they just call it cooldown reduction, which is a simple term. Even though they change this ability haste here, the, it's still cooldown reduction. Why? Because it's better, or it's or it's small. I know. Anyway, let's move on. Runa, Runa's hurricane. Runa's hurricane. On hit damage from 30 to 15. So it is nerfed. All right. That's fine. It's a bit overtuned. All right. I don't know if it's overtuned. I guess if they say so. Small nerf. All right. Static shift. Shift launched a bit underpowered. Also, all of the AP Physics players, AP AD Leblon players like this change randomly. I don't know if you, I don't know. <laughs> all right. So now it's more base damage. St same scaling. Vega static shift players. It does exist. All right. So it's more damage for for Vega with static shift. I mean, all of it, obviously all the AD cares like this change. So it's decent. Static is underpowered compared to the Storm Razor, I would say so. Yeah, and Storm Razor is getting nerfed. All right. Damage to minions is more. All right, makes sense. It's a wave clear item. All right. So, buff to static, fine. And now Storm Razor. Storm Razor came out of the mid season gate swinging, landing a bit too strong. It is default for most AD carries as a first item, or, or many. So, yeah, I would say. Overly gold efficient, contributing too much to burst. All right. So we nerf it by 5 AD and we change it. Change. Is the active damage. It's called change, I guess. All right, so 10 less damage on the active thing and five less AD. There it is. Nerf to Storm Razor. I think that's fine. Very strong item. All right. You almost go split. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Light a candle. Candle. Light it. All right. I'll light it later for sure. All right. Anyway, ability haste. Twenty to fifteen. Ability haste goes down. Yomo got a huge nerf because it was pretty much the default item for most assassins because it was really good. So now they kind of try to change it, which is weird since this is like a burst, right? So you get this stacking buff while walking and then it's like a burst of lethality. So it's supposed to be the highest damage item, right? I guess not, because now it gives less ability haste. Bond's lethality goes from eight to 20 to three to 12. So that is quite a lot less lethality. And the stacks are even slower now. So Yomu charges at a third of the speed of which like Storm Razor or Static Charge. So now it charges even slower. 20% slower. So yeah, there it is. This is not that, that relevant in my opinion, not the end of the world. Bonus Lethality is a huge hit and Ability Haze also sucks. So. Let's compare this. I am 95% sure, 99% sure that Dusk Blade will give you more damage as a first item option now than Yomu, even though it's like a defensive item with the Dusk Blade thing, untargetable thing, but yeah, there it is. Yomu quite heavily nerfed. And one more change in this patch is the buff sharing. So buff sharing buff wisps, so it's kind of like Ivern. When a juggler kills the red or blue, when smite is fully upgraded, they will still receive the buff, but there will be a, a buff wisp will be dropped, so you can take the rat and still your AD carry can get it once you have your smite fully up updated. Also, if, they are, if, if your AD carry goes and randomly kills the red, then you will still get this wisp, and for one minute you can pick up the red buff. So that means there are two red buffs per team right now, mid to late game. I don't know what minute you usually finish this jungle item, but from that time, two buffs. 
half red awesome is one thing. If you steal or you invade enemies red and take it, then you're denying two buffs from the enemy team, right? So stealing enemy buffs is much more valuable right now. Then you have three buffs in your team and they have no buffs, lol. Alright. No. <laughs> it works on enemy buffs also. What? Excuse me? An enemy has been slain. So by stealing enemy buffs, not only are you you're, not only are you denying them two buffs, Double you're kill. also getting two buffs for yourself. So by taking this and then taking this, alright, so you can get a refresh, so you can have three buffs in the team. And Your deny team them too, right? It's kinda how it is. So that's buff sharing. I, I don't know if I like this change to be honest, but... Because they wanted to reduce the field... Buff sharing is to reduce fields but moments. It's a strategic decision. I don't know. I don't think it's that big of a deal. But alright, there it is. Buff sharing. We get two buffs per team now. And that is it. ARAM, right, whatever. Clash, bug fixes, skins. Those are actually pretty cool skins. And they are coming. So that is it for the patch rundown. Thank you so much for watching. Come check out the stream where this is happening live. Subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one. Bye bye.